good morning and welcome to our pre-recorded online service here at McGee Nazarene on Sunday the 13th of September. Wherever you're watching, however you're watching, we're so glad and honoured that you have chosen to partake in this sacred time together as we gather as the church, both online and also in person in our building at half past 11. We're so encouraged. We believe that God is going to do amazing things in our midst this morning. And it is my prayer for you that as you watch at home or you watch wherever you're watching, that you would truly experience the goodness of the grace of God, that the Holy Spirit would truly come and move in your heart and in your life as we worship our King together this morning. Before we move to some sung worship with Benjamin, I just want to read to you from Psalm 92, and it's entitled A Song for the Sabbath. It says this, it says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the work of your hands I sing for joy. And then on down in verse 12, it says that the righteous flourish like the palm tree. And grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Let's join together, wherever we are, and let us worship our God and King, our solid rock in song. Let's sing. Lord, our God is able. 
found in his name. Yes, we overcome. For the Lord our God is able. And lifted up, he defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In his name we overcome. For the Lord our God is able. Before we continue to worship God in song, uh, I just want to bring to your attention two very quick announcements. The first one is surrounding the new restrictions that have been placed on the Belfast City Council postcodes um, by the Northern Ireland exec- Executive. I want, to, I want to tell you this. Churches are exempt from that. And we have done everything that we can as a church leadership to ensure that we comply with the public health and Northern Ireland executive guidelines around social distancing and ensuring that our people are safe for and from the coronavirus. We're really excited that we can still meet together in a way that is safe and socially distanced. And I want to encourage you that maybe you're on the fence, maybe you're not too sure whether or not you're going to be coming back to church any time soon. I want to say this. This is a safe place. We've done everything we can. And you're so welcome to join with us at half past 11 next Sunday morning. Because at the end of the day, you belong here. And you're so welcome. And if you choose to continue to worship online, that is more than okay as well. But we just didn't want you to think that it wasn't safe for you to come. It is, and we're really excited about all that God is going to do in our midst as we gather together in person. The second announcement is also to do with next Sunday. Next weekend, the 19th and 20th, were due to be our special church anniversary services. We had a weekend of services planned and we were going to fly over the Reverend Tommy and Anne Goodwin to come and minister the word to us. But for obvious reasons, that's not going to take place in person. But it's still going to take place online. So I'm really excited. 6 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube, we are going to have special anniversary service next Sunday evening, the 20th of September. As I've mentioned, Reverends Tommy and Anne Goodwin are going to minister the word to us. My big brother, Pastor William Robinson, um, who is a worship pastor in Florida, is going to be leading us in worship. We have special guests from the past and the present who are going to be involved, and I don't want to ruin any of those surprises for you. We also have greetings from our district superintendent, the Reverend Jim Ritchie. Uh, for us as a church as we celebrate the goodness of God and all that God has done in and through the Church of the Nazarene here in East Belfast over the last 69 years and as we look forward to all that he's going to do in the future as well. So put that in your diary, Sunday the 20th of September, next Sunday 6pm, Facebook and YouTube, we're going to have an online anniversary celebration and you're so welcome to join us there. At this point, we're going to hand back to Benjamin as we worship God together in song. Let us continue by focusing on the cross at this time, by singing, Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Nice. 
light Worthy is the Lamb oh, Worthy is the Lamb Thank you for the cross, Lord this point in our service we're going to take some time to slow down and we're going to rest in God we have an awesome privilege of a direct line a direct connection that is open 24 hours a day seven days a week to our creator God we call this prayer a dialogue between us and the creator so for the next couple of minutes a video will play and I just want you to take some time as we prepare ourselves to hear from God's word. Let's pray together. Let's steady our souls. Let's rest in God before we come to the word. Let's pray.
And Lord, we pray now that as we gather around your word, Lord, that you would illuminate it to our hearts, that you would speak clearly to us through it, that you would deal with us as your church. Lord, that you would even rebuke us where we need to be rebuked, but Lord, also that you would encourage us, that you would lift us up, and Lord, that we would leave with a deeper appreciation for you, for all that you have done for us, and all that you continue to do, a deeper appreciation for these things than we had before we came to church this morning. And we pray all these things in the name that is higher than any other name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, amen. And I'm really excited. I'm always excited at this point in the service as we come and we gather around the Word. And we're going to be continuing on in our second week of our new series, Devoted, which we started last week, looking at the early church and the characteristics which made the early church the early church. Our focus text is found in Acts chapter 2 verses, uh, from verse 42. And last week we considered how we were to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching and how all the apostles' teaching was rooted in and around the person of Jesus Christ, the Word of God the Father, and how we are to devote ourselves as a result of that to loving God, to loving others, our neighbour, and loving the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But this morning, we're going to continue on and we're going to look at something else. But let's read those words from Acts chapter 2, picking up at verse 42 together. And it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day after day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. Amen. And we pray, trust, and believe that God will add his blessing to the public declaration of his word this morning. But as we read this verse in particular, verse 42, the order in which Luke, the author of the book of Acts, arranges these four characteristics is no accident, but rather is really deliberate and methodical on his part. You see, the fellowship is so much more than coming to church on a Sunday or watching church online, so much more than just ticking the boxes and doing the right things. But true fellowship is only achievable in the life of a Christian, whenever there is a devotion to the apostles' teaching. Devotion to the fellowship is only possible when there is a devotion to a deep love for and devotion to God, to his word, to, his na- to our neighbour and to the gospel. And today we're going to consider what fellowship is and what devotion to it is, and what that means for us as the church in these days. It'll come as no surprise to you that there's going to be three points this morning. The first point is that fellowship is the community of God. I don't know if you know this, but God himself is a community. In church, we refer to this community as the Godhead or the Trinity comprised of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We sing about it in that song, Holy, 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 God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. 
And many, many efforts have been made to describe the Trinity. And to be honest, a quick YouTube search of St. Patrick's bad analogies will show you why I'm not going to try and dumb it down. Why I'm not going to try and explain this in simple terms this morning. But the Trinity, within the Godhead, there are three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are equally God. Neither of them were created by the other, nor does any of them have precedent over one another. They are completely united. They are equal in glory, and they are co-equal in majesty. The truth of the matter is the Trinity, the Godhead, is a mystery which cannot be understood by our human reasoning, but can only be understood through faith. The fellowship is the community of God. In the community of God, the Trinity, the Godhead, was present from the beginning of time. The Godhead was present at the creation. You read in Genesis chapter 1, let us create man in our image. The Trinity was present at Jesus' baptism. We're following his immersion and him coming back up. God the Spirit descends like a dove and rests upon Jesus, God the Son. And the voice of the God the Father is heard from the heavenly places where he says, this is my Son with whom I am well pleased. The Trinity is present throughout the scriptures. Another example is seen in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the high priestly prayer of Jesus, where Jesus declares that I and the, fa- I and the Father are one. And he prays in the Holy Spirit that we, his disciples, would be united in love, just as he is united in love. He prays for the unity of the church. The Trinity is present in the heavenly places right now. The Trinity is present wherever you're watching this right now. God himself exists in fellowship, in community. And today, as Peter prayed for the churches in the province of Galatia, on the Mediterranean Sea, In 1 Peter 1, I pray that according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Christ and be sprinkled in his blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. See, the very same God who calls us to devote ourselves to the fellowship, gives us example of fellowship through his word with the blessed Trinity, God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dwells together in harmony, unity, and love, and calls us, his people, the church, to do the same. St. Augustine tried to describe this. He says, The Holy Spirit, who is the vinculum caritatis, the bond of love in eternity between the Father and the Son, now continues to fill the Son, even as incarnate, so that in Jesus, man loves the Father with all his heart, soul, mind and strength the trinity is a mystery we can't explain it with human logic it requires faith to understand but in the trinity we see example of fellowship we see example of this community into which 
God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit calls us to devote ourselves to in Acts chapter 2. And just as fellowship is the community of God, so too fellowship is living for God. You've often heard me talk about these, these words, these processes, this way of life, holiness and sanctification. And they're often things that are spoke about as personal things. And they are deeply personal things. A personal relationship which leads to change in the Christian. A personal relationship with Christ. And then being moulded more and more into the image of Christ. A personal thing. And this is correct. I've not been telling you lies for months and months and months. It's absolutely correct. However, holiness is not something which is solely personal. But it is something that is to be lived out and developed in our lives through community, through fellowship with one another. This call toward one another is so prevalent throughout Scripture. It appears time and time and time again, particularly in the New Testament Scriptures and in Paul's letters that he writes to the churches, but also in the words which Jesus spoke. And there are positive ways that we are to act toward one another. And there are also negative ways in which we are to ensure that we do not act towards one another in those ways. Those negative things include judging one another, biting one another with our tongues and our words. We're not to provoke one another or envy one another. We're not to lie to one another. We're not to speak evil against one another. We're not to grumble against one another. These are commands of God. Things which we are not to do. Things which do not reflect the beauty of Christ's holiness. But there are lists upon lists of things that we are to do. Things which when done in community. Things which as we are being molded more and more into Christ's likeness become second nature to us. Just a handful of those we are to be kind-hearted and tender-hearted toward one another. We're to be patient with one another. We're to forgive one another. We're to admonish one another and comfort one another. We're to submit to one another and pray for one another. We're to bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. We are to love one another. Jesus said that they will know that we are his disciples' heart by the love that we have for one another. We are to exhort and encourage one another. The scripture is so clear that holiness is something which is to be done not only personally, but is something which is to be done in fellowship with one another. It is something which is to be done in community. Proverbs 27 and verse 17 says that iron sharpens iron, which is really difficult to say if you're Northern Irish and want to say it quickly. But iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. One woman sharpens another. You see, church, the more that we study the scriptures, the more we realize our need for Christian community. We were created one for each other. Yes, of course, to worship God. But we were also created for fellowship with one another. To be the fellowship. To be the church that Christ has been calling us to be. The scriptures describe the church, describe the fellowship as the body of Christ. The church with Christ 
as its head. We were created to worship God together. And in so doing, we grow in our holiness, are sanctified by the Holy Spirit of God and begin to imitate and reflect the holiness of God, radiating the message of hope and reconciliation, of forgiveness of sins and abundant life that Jesus came and laid down his life to make possible. And just as the grave could not hold the risen, conquering son, King Jesus, so too will our lives tell of victory won and the grace of God when we live together as the community, the church that Christ has called us to be by devoting ourselves to the fellowship, devoting ourselves to the bride of Christ. John Wesley famously said, holy solitaires is a phrase no more consistent with the gospel than holy adulterers. The gospel of Christ knows no religion but social and no holiness but social holiness. You see, we were created to be in fellowship with one another. We were created to serve God, not on our Todd, but together. We were created to show the goodness of God and show that we belong to him by loving one another, by fellowshipping together. And we've given loads of examples of ways that we can do that today. But we read in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25, we read these words together. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I make no apologies for standing before you today and declaring that I believe in the church of Jesus Christ. I believe in the church. I believe that we were created to be the vessel through which Jesus moves in our local communities. We were created to be together, to love one another, to be the example of hope and reconciliation, that example of forgiveness of sins and lives transformed that the communities around about us need to see. The local church is the hope of the world because Jesus Christ lives within the individuals of the local church. And when we work together in tandem, whenever we serve God together and we love one another, the church will once again become a movement which spreads like wildfire, telling of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, transforming communities in Jesus' name, reaching and meeting needs of people doing kingdom business, working for the king. I believe in the church, for we are the bride of Christ. So let's be the church that we are being called to be. Let us devote ourselves to the fellowship. Because just as the fellowship is the community of God and the fellowship is living for God, Fellowship leads to multiplication. See, as the early church devoted themselves to the fellowship, as they lived this life of communal holiness, they shared possessions, they distributed to the needy as they attended worship gatherings together, as they shared meals with one another in one another's homes, 
as they praise God in the way that they lived and acted, fever amongst the people and multiplication were the byproducts of their faith in Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. Favor amongst the people and multiplication in the church were byproducts of their devotion to the fellowship. As they devoted themselves to being the church, to being the bride of Christ, it brought favor and it also brought multiplication. And by multiplication, I mean this. The people from outside of the fellowship joined the fellowship after they had had an encounter with Jesus Christ because of what they had seen and what they had heard from those in the church. If we get this fellowship thing right, I want to tell you this. Our community here will never be the same again. I believe that with all that I am. And I stand on the authority of the word of God today and say if we devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship that we're looking at today and the breaking of bread, which we'll look at next week, and the prayers, which we'll look at the week after. If we do these things, our community will notice and our community will be transformed because communal or social holiness leads to multiplication in the church because it transforms the community in which the church are located. And when we take this call seriously to devote ourselves to the fellowship, everything changes. Everything changes. Satan shakes with fear. Our love for God and neighbour is deepened beyond anything we could ever imagine in and of ourselves. The movement that is the church gathers momentum in the community. Transformation of said community begins to happen as we live out social holiness, which drives us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. There is so much more that I could say to you this morning, but I feel that the Holy Spirit of God is saying that's it. That's the nail on the head. This is the time to stop. This is the time that we press in. Maybe you've been hurt by the church down through the years. Maybe you felt let down, betrayed, stabbed in the back. I want to say this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that has happened to you. And maybe as a church here in East Belfast, we need to repent of the wrongs that we have done toward other people. And if you're one of those today, as the pastor of this church, I say sorry. Sorry. Wholeheartedly. The church may have let you down, but God never will. And God calls you to community. God calls you to be a part of the fellowship, to be part of the church. So maybe you're watching and you haven't come back to church because you enjoy just sitting and watching church in your pajamas on a Sunday morning. You need to be here. You need to get involved in the church. I know many of you can't be for a variety of different reasons. And I want to encourage you, tap into the different things that the church are doing. Ring one another, call one another, encourage one another. All of those one another's that we looked at earlier, do those. But today, today church, let's be the church that God has called us to be. Let's be the fellowship who live together, not in keeping our holiness to ourselves, but in pouring our lives and devoting ourselves to the fellowship. 
Because when that happens, God will do incredible, incredible things. Be blessed today. Be blessed. Know that God is for you. That he loves you. And let's be a people who live together in community. Let's pray. Lord, we pray today that we would be a people who are not only devoted to the apostles' teaching, but who are also devoted to the fellowship. People devoted to the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to live in community with one another. Help us to bear one another's burdens and love one another. Encourage one another and build one another up. Lord, help us to live out this social holiness, this communal holiness that you're calling us to, that your word calls us to. And Lord, we boldly pray that you would start something, even today, within the life of our church here in East Belfast, that would set a fire, a Holy Spirit fire, on our community which leads to transformation of each and every soul within our reach. Lord, have your way in us. Have your way through us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close our time of worship by singing this song lovely modern hymn Living Hope
my living hope. I sang that like in the morning. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Amen And then came the morning that sealed the promise Silence, the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the one who said, Be free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, the salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, and hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me And you have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope Oh God, you are my living hope is God you are the living hope the only living hope that we as your creation need Lord may we turn to you may we acknowledge you may we feel your presence with us as this new week begins and comes around thank you for this time to give us Praise you, Father God. All God's children said, Amen. God bless you. May his grace shine upon you. He loves you. You are his child. We are his beloved. Go in the peace of Christ.